Give us a call 01254583583. Text through on 81333. It's great to hear all your stories. It's ten past eight. Now, how many reports do we need before we find out whether the process of fracking is actually safe? The extraction of shale gas is a topic of great interest here in Lancashire, given that the test drilling has taken place on the Fylde and in West Lanx. Uh, fracking is still on hold after two earthquakes near Blackpool, but the debate about it goes on. Now, two organisations, the Royal Society with the UK's National Academy of Science and the Royal Academy of Engineering were asked by the government's chief scientific advisor, Professor John Beddington, to produce a report on fracking. And today they're outlining their findings, which say fracking can be carried out safely. However, there is a but. The need for strong regulation and robust systems to monitor the operations. Dr John Roberts is a member of the Joint Royal Academy of Engineering Royal Society Working Group. Uh, Dr Roberts. Morning. Is it safe then? Because I want to know, this big but, you know, the need for strong regulation, robust systems, what are they then? What will, that, what will constitute the, 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 the robust uh, safety measures? What we're saying is that <coughs> fracking can be carried out <coughs> in the UK, but what it needs is, as I, you just mentioned, a proper system of regulation. And what that really means is that we need... Um, proper control on the possibility of earth tremors, which is very, very low in truth. It's less likely than naturally occurring earth tremors or even the earth tremors that you would get from uh, abandoned coal mines. <coughs> well, a colleague well, of yours, who uh, <coughs> Professor Zoe Shipton, is quoted in the Daily Mirror this morning saying basically many of the tremors are just similar to that of a passing bus. That's absolutely right. It's, it's very similar to that. But what we're saying is that Nevertheless, we should um, have a form of regulation that ensures that any operator properly monitors any likelihood of earth tremors before, during and after they've done any drilling. And also, we should also have regulation that properly looks at uh, the possibility of, of groundwater, <coughs> excuse me, groundwater Sorry, contamination. Yeah. Uh, and so again, uh, we already have good regulations in place in the UK to control uh, groundwater contamination, but what we're saying is that that needs to be more focused uh, to take this particular thing into account, and also that... But the, th the thing I find a little confusing, and perhaps critics too listening would, is that, you know, here is yet another report, and there have been a few now, Dr Roberts, and we're still talking about ifs and buts, and surely a report isn't needed to say, yeah, it's fine to do if proper safety precautions are made. I mean, that should go without saying, surely. What we're looking at are the specific needs for uh, onshore uh, gas extraction through uh, fracking. This is something that's never really been done in the UK on a wide scale, so we were specifically asked by the government to look at these two issues about earth tremors and about groundwater contamination. We've made recommendations to the government about how that can be specifically addressed. Whether or not then there are further investigations that be needed to be done, that is a matter for the government because, for example, we've not uh, addressed issues, the broader climate change issues or the broader issues of public acceptability. Who's going to cover those then? That's a matter for the government to decide whether they think now they've got enough information, as you say, there have been quite a few reports about uh, sh shale gas extraction it really is now for the government to decide exactly what they want to do and how they want to proceed but on these two particular issues we've laid out for them very clearly what we think they need to do so does your report give a green light for fracking uh, that is a matter for the government to, to determine what we've said is on the particular issues of earth tremors and groundwater contamination here are the things that you need to do government if you want to make sure those risks are absolutely minimized but whether or not they give it a green light is a matter for them right the, the, the matter for the government then but doesn't the government rely on experts like yourself to guide them well we're guiding them on these two particular aspects as i said there are wider issues that need to take into account like public acceptability like the impact of climate change the wider issues around that. They're huge questions though, aren't they? Those are big questions and it may well be the government wants to... Another ten reports I, needed. I don't think they need another ten reports. It's for them to decide exactly what they need to do. Dr. What, Roberts, we, what we need is an informed decision to be made. Would you, would you live on the File Coast? I'd love to live on the File Coast. It wouldn't bother you? No. And the thought of passing buses, although, you know, passing buses don't cause water contamination, it still remains unanswered really, doesn't it? 
What we've done here, I think, is to answer very specifically the questions about seismicity, about earth tremors, and about groundwater contamination. Those are issues we feel that can be properly dealt with uh, and properly regulated. The risks will be absolutely minimised. So I don't think there's any ifs or buts as far as that is concerned. And you'd live in an area where fracking went under, uh, was underway? Yes, I would. All right. Well, thank you for your thoughts this morning. That's okay. Thank you. Dr. John Roberts, one of those uh, in the Royal Academy of Engineering, Royal Society Joint Working Group. If you live on the file, they have been asking for your thoughts to pass on to Dr. John Roberts. What do you think? He's happy to live on the file coast. If you have a view... So we are talking about fracking, yet another report out today. Uh, on the surface, it would seem to be quite significant, given it was asked for by the government's chief scientific advisor, uh, Professor John Beddington. But as we know with fracking, it's what goes on beneath the surface that focuses attention. BBC Radio Lancashire's Steve Becker is on the file now. Did, do you think that's going to answer any questions for those concerned about it, Steve? I very much doubt it from your interview, Alison, but let's put that to uh, the horse's mouth when it comes to campaigners, as it were. There are many, many campaigners in different forms, different groups uh, they're developing all the time. Just this morning I'm hearing about another group of local businessmen which is about to be established. One that has been established for a few months now is RAF, Residents Action on Filed Fracking, and I'm joined from the group this morning in Lytham by Geza Tariani. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning. You were listening to that interview that Alison just did uh, with one of the report's authors with interest. Um, two main issues, really. It's so wide-ranging, but let's narrow it down. Water contamination and earth tremors. Um, the author of the report said, basically, no cause for alarm. Uh, not much worse in terms of tremors and a bus going by. What do you make of that? Uh, can I just say, first of all, it's yet another person, a faceless person who's actually put this, brought this point up again. Uh, they, uh, as they actually investigate, have they been to the file, have they been to any of the drilling sites? Uh, the HSC haven't been down very rarely. Uh, Michael, uh, an independent uh, advisor, has actually been uh, campaigning for all these things that's on this uh, report, and it is only a report. Well, yes, nevertheless, we're, we're painting it as perhaps the most significant. It's done by two very august bodies on behalf of the government's chief scientific advisor, so perhaps not so easy to dismiss these. Uh, yeah, but they've still got to qualify it. That's still what to, we've got to qualify it. Uh, we're getting a lot of reports. We've seen uh, a lot of reports in the papers uh, being dismissive of activists. Uh, we're not activists, we're reactivists. Well, this is coming on our... our uh, at our doorstep. Uh, and we're saying about it's uh, nimbyism. Well, they keep throwing names at us, you see. Now, that's the best they can do. I think we're actually uh, ruffling a few feathers. The last couple of reports, this to add to them as well, there was one done by uh, a file council task group, the British Geological Survey before that, and they're all now saying, yes, it would be safe given these safeguards. I know that's a, a controversial issue in itself, but the weight of, of momentum seems to be going against campaigners such as your own group, basically saying, as long as the safeguards are in place, it can and it should go ahead. Are, are you losing the argument? Uh, can, can I first of all uh, bring up the thing about the, the, the bus uh, passing by your house? Uh, I live in Lyd them and the pre-sold farm site behind Wheaton Barracks that uh, I think is uh, uh, behind Wheaton Barracks where our brave uh, soldiers and their families are as well, uh, uh, is, is miles away from my property. Uh, I had damage at my property on the 1st of April. Uh, I first of all felt the tremor and then next day woke up and found there was damage to my property. Uh, so it can't be a bus, it might be a huge bus to go past to damage my property. Well, let me come back to the question I asked, given that, let's put that in brackets, as it were. Yeah. Are you and other campaigners losing the argument now? Uh, the, weight of, the weight of report and opinion, scientific opinion, seems to be going against you. Uh, not really. What it is, uh, a lot of people are getting misinformation from the uh, Quad Gorilla Group, and it's with you. I've been to many presentations where all the things that's been presented there, a lot of, of uh, misinformation... But this is, this is not Quadrilla, this is the Royal Society, the Royal Academy of Engineers. They're not Quadrilla, they're, they are independent, if you like. You might argue the toss, but this is a, a report done by, as I say, august bodies on behalf of the government. So it moves away from uh, the, the vested interests, and it has to be taken much more seriously. And again, I suggest to you that it means that you're losing the case. Uh, well, I must uh, uh, <laughs> just say that, yeah, that, that a lot of the reports, the, um, the thing that's in there, and, and Mike Hill, who has been dismissed by Quadrilla, has not been... He, he's an independent advisor to, to file counsel. That's right, that's correct. Uh, and there's a lot of things in the report that has been scripted independently uh, to the HSC and the deck for. Uh, they have been dragging the feet and keep passing the ball. We need to have proper regulation, but really we want a frac free file. This is going to affect property, our families in the future. Again, it's a body of people telling the people who have filed what they need to do. We asked the report's author, would you come and live here? He said, yes, no problem at all. Um, they might say you're overstating the concerns. Words are cheap.
Now, we do live here. I've got damage to my property. That won't be up to the, the fact of the foul fracking. Can I just also add as well, I'm not an activist. I'm an entertainer. That's what I wanted to do. I, I would rather not be in this position. Quadrilla have forced our hands. We're reacting to a, a imminent danger to our properties, to our families and to our futures. Uh, we've got uh, up the road, we've got the uh, Blackpool, which is tourism. Uh, it's the biggest employer. A lot of children are going to be coming into this uh, and first the jobs they get, first jobs they well, It's not going to affect the tourism industry, is it? Whatever happens, even if you get a few earth tremors, uh, as we did, life goes on. Uh, we're talking about public confidence here as well. And the thing is now, like I said, we've, uh, we've got local business groups now. Uh, that every presentation that I think I'm putting together for free, uh, we're giving the information out that the best uh, way we can do it and putting the truth out there and the facts the best we know it. A lot of the facts come from the Tyndall report that was uh, financed by the co-op uh, and, uh, and uh, so a lot of, a lot, a lot of the, the facts come out there. What we do find is when once people know about this they're on board, they want to do something about it. The only problem is we can't get the word out fast enough. I'm putting uh, all my uh, free time in it, it's taken over my life because we, I realise the danger in this. It's too much to say in a five minute slot on the radio. All okay. right, Gazer, thank you for coming out to talk to Steve. I'm going to leap in there because I want to bring in another listener who has uh, got opinions on fracking. Let me bring in uh, Mildred. Good morning. Hello, Mildred. Morning. Hello, it's Alison here. You're, you, you're wrong in because you have concerns over the fracking report. Well, um... All I know about it, I mean, I've heard about it, like, obviously. But, do you know, we, it wakened us up that uh, morning when when this all happened. Mildred, it's Mildred, can, can I, I just stop you there and ask you to turn your radio down? Yeah, I'm coming upstairs and Mildred's got it on there. Yeah, yes. Is that better? Yeah, it is. Go on. Yeah, we were in bed and it... Th all of a sudden, it shook the bed and shook the wardrobe doors. Now, to tell a man to say it's like a double-decker bus going past your house, that is rubbish because we live just off a main road. And that's never shook our, our houses or anything. So I thought that was totally wrong to say that because it did shake our house. And we, we've never had anything shake theirs before. And we're not people as complain or anything like that, but I think it's very dangerous. All right, well, thanks for your view. You're one of those who's expressing concern, all different reasons coming in. But Mildred... Only about uh, at least three miles away from, from where it were happening at Singleton. Mm. So, uh, you know, it's a long way, that. OK, obviously concern, Mildred. Thank you for your call. 01254 583 583. And thank you to Geza Tarjani, who was talking to Steve Becker there, a member of Residence Action on Filed 